Today, we'll be talking about lid treatments in some more complex cases. For example, what if you have a case where you want to do everything you can possibly do to a lid, but only have one patient? That's the question today. We'll have a solution for you. First, numb the lids. If you're going to do them, brutalize them, make sure they're numb because they will not like this. Nobody likes the numbing either, but it makes the rest much better. Always, 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 as many hands on the patient as possible. One hand holds down the lid, but also serves, as you can tell, to rest the syringe on it. I inject, after aspiration, of course, some lidocaine with epinephrine inside the eye. Faster numbing, no bruising, but from a patient's perspective, more intimidating because I am right going towards the eye. No lid that blocks them where they can ignore what's going on. This part observing seems to be the most uncomfortable part for the patient, just feeling that numbing in the eye. But once they get nice and numb, they're ready for the meibomian gland probing here. Now this is each individual meibomian gland orifice being penetrated with, with a very short length uh, needle in this case. The probes come in one, two and four millimeter length. The longer, the more flimsy. Tiny, tiny probe, just barely fits in. This is where you hear the crunching when you have a gland that's a little obstructed. The reported numbing is with some cream that you have to put in for hours. I have not noticed any that worked that well. The injection definitely works better, but even as you can see here in between, I applied a little bit more because the patient was still feeling it. And any kind of inflamed tissue, scar tissue makes numbing work less well. At what point do you look at an eyelid like this and say, you know, the warm compresses aren't enough. The oral antibiotics might be, not be enough. When do you consider probing for the patient? Usually based on expression. If I can't express anything, probing can help, always in combination with IPL. But the probing itself is very, very uncomfortable. So I basically will try everything before I do probing. From a patient perspective, much better tolerated if we work up to it as opposed to start with this. And in this case, taking a lot of work around that area where the pyogenic granuloma is visible, trying to get the full extent of the lid. Both eyelids can be performed because both are at risk for the meibomian gland dysfunction and possible styes. In this case, it was more this patient's lower lid that had a repeated problem leading to my pyogenic granuloma. I always compare, correct, and I combine this obviously with expression to see if this works. And you can see a nice expression. There was nothing expressible before here. And after the probing, there's more ability to express. This patient had done this before, so actually asked for a probing to see if this would help him again. And in this case, pretty obvious with that thick yellow mybum coming out of the mybomian gland, pro, or the expression was also done on the upper lids as well. This is a much quicker squeeze. That's all that's usually required on a normal eyelid. This is his other eyelid as well, trying to get some of the oil out, but still resistant to some expression. And upper lids tend to be easier to express because gravity helps you. They tend to be not as obstructed. However, more difficult because you want to get it away from the eyes. You can see I kind of push on the upper lid margin and tarsus to rotate it away. This was very satisfying to watch just the debride dimension trying to clean off that mybum and clean off some of that epithelium over the surface of those openings. And yeah, after the uh, debridement, I removed the pyogenic granuloma. Patient had been bothered by this appearance and also felt like there was something in the eye. So I just uh, removed the surface first. And then I think I asked him if the insight was bothering him as well, because I assumed this would be enough. And he said, yep, there's more that's bothering him. How long had this problem been going on for this patient? As far as I recall, he had said multiple months. You know, he, had, he had not just come in with this. It's been around for a while. They also tend to respond to steroid injections, both styes as well as the pyogenic granuloma. So here I go along the same opening that I previously opened up with the probes and inject some steroid has also been reported in the treatment of myeloma dysfunction and to achieve some better control of the bleeding I apply some radio frequency uh, instead of a thermal cautery we are lucky to have this unit which no heat being produced at radio frequency works really well and it's much more confined. When I'm looking at this, I'm trying to decide, is this more for hemostasis to stop the bleeding or is this actually contracting the wound tissue? What what are we actually seeing here? So I think you're seeing some contraction. However, since it's in blood, I, I adjust the power a little bit more. Um, the rate of frequency can be used both to cut as well to coagulate. And here I want a little bit of both. And then I think the final step, just that last little piece, trying to pull off of the pyogenic granuloma to get it as smooth as possible for the patient. And Overall, this was a very successful treatment for the patient and getting them back feeling much better.